this is where Dan and I <laughs> uh, spend a lot of time. And so I'm going to caveat, I'm going to, let me provide some background, right? So in this scenario, right, we're just going to talk about querying uh, SQL Server, okay? Um, and what we set out to do, so, and, and again, at this point, I'm going to throw this slide up again and say, hey, in, in this scenario, since we're querying SQL Server, we don't need the external file format. And you saw that in the demo. We don't need that, but it's the same thing, right? We're just creating an external data source. You saw that, create the external table. We didn't create, uh, create statistics on that column, but we're going to talk. That's what Dan and I are going to talk about, right? And let me talk about, let me back the bus up here because when we started down this path, and I'm going to take a couple minutes to explain this. When we started down this path, you know, like I said, we had a couple of clients going, hey, we want to, you know, we've got link servers as poly based an option. And most of us have been around a long time to know that uh, link servers are notoriously slow, right? Because when you execute a query, it basically says, hey, select star from, right? It brings all the data, goes goes to the source, grabs the, you know, grabs the data, brings it back, and then does the unions, join, sorts, all that kind of stuff, right? So it's notoriously slow, right? So when we got into this, we thought, well, let's, Let's talk about link servers and Polybase and prove that Polybase is actually faster. So Dan and I spent quite a bit of time the last few days looking into this. And what we're going to demo is that may or may not be the case. And so because what we found is, and we'll get into this, is that you know older versions, yeah, but newer versions, we had all these demos lined up and it's like, hey, link servers was actually faster in 2019, right? And so I, what we want to do in these demos is get into that, but the reason we got into this is because, hey, let's do a comparison because if on on we thought, hey, in this scenario, link servers is slow, so Polybase must be faster, right? And we're going to get into that, right? And so this is why, you know, Dan's on is because we're going to have kind of show you what happens when you query a link, you know, use link server, use the exact same query, but over a link server versus Polybase and what happens, okay? So I don't want to spend a lot of time looking at link servers. This is really um, uh, oh, too far. Um, everybody knows link servers, right? It basically, hey, I'm going to uh, it basically establish a connection to some other uh, SQL Server instance somewhere, right? Uh, and then I'll, that allows me to uh, execute commands like, so, you know, select up to whatever to that source, right? Um, this is supported in SQL Server and Azure SQL Managed Instance, right? But we all know that, right? Just I've got a client, I'm gonna create a link server and I'm gonna use that down the road, right? Uh, I wanna query that instance, okay? Before we get into the demo, uh, I got a couple of slides that I wanna talk about the differences between external tables and link servers. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on there because I wanna get into the, the demos, the, the demos, but uh, we saw this earlier, right? When I create a link server, that link server is scoped at the instance level, right? That means any, you know, right? the as you saw in the demo, uh, external tables are database scoped, right? I create them in the database I'm working with, right? Um, one of the downsides, I think, to Polybase, unless I'm using HDF, you know, HDFS and going to Hadoop or something, is that it's real only, right? And I think that's a that's a limitation. Hopefully, they'll fix that. But you know, if I'm doing link server, I can do read and write, right? Um, one of the great things about uh, external tables is, is you know, uh, push down. I'll talk. The next slide is about push down computations, right? We'll talk about that a little bit, right? Um, I think there's pros and cons, and I'm not going to go over every everything, right? Uh, external tables, like you saw in the initial demo, it's basic authentication, right? I can't do Windows authentication yet, right? Uh, distributed returns actions aren't supported, but in link servers they are supported. So there's pros and cons here, and at this point you got to go, okay. What am I? What are my requirements? What do I really need? And what am I going to use? Okay. I can show you. Um, all right. So here's a quick difference. I just wanted to highlight the differences here between external tables and link servers, right? Um, again, I think there's pros and cons to both, right? But what I do want to do before I get into the demo is talk about uh, push down computations, right? And I mentioned this earlier, we really got into, when Dan and I got into this, it was, okay, you know, SQL link servers must be 
uh, slow because you know it, it basically says hey if I select you know select something from a table and join it brings all that table the, all that data back and then you know then does all the computations on you know from where we're executing the query right well we found that's different in SQL Server 2019 but you know one of the great things about Polybase because this is a Polybase presentation is that you know it actually does the push down. So if I, you know, all my aggregations, all my computations, it pushes those down to the source and will only return the results to me. So it should be much faster, right? It should be much faster, right? And the whole goal around that is to reduce the workload on the SQL, on, on the your SQL Server instance, right? So I don't want to have to bring all that data back and then do all the computations. That's an extra workload on that on the source where I mean uh, where I'm on my SQL server but um, you know I want all the work to be happen where the data resides because that'll be that drastically improve, improves performance if I can have all these computations done where the data resides uh, improve performance right so I included the link here on the slide to the computation there are, you know, there's a ton of things that are uh, um, functions that are supported in SQL Server, uh, string and math mathematical functions that are supported automatically, that are automatically pushed down. Some are not supported, like, you know, uh, greatest, ran, checksum. It's all in this document, right? What that means is that those will not be pushed down. Those will have to be done on the calling side, right? So those are not supported. Those will, are not available for push down, okay? And there's a whole slew like, um, you know, uh, and the, the the I think the key takeaway from this slide is that, you know, without, you know, and one of the great things about this is that, um, you know, you can do um, facilitate push downs of the join operator, which is awesome, right? So if I have a join operator, it'll push that down as well and do all the computation on where the data resides and then bring that back. Without that join push down, uh, the data from the tables uh, are brought back, brought back into TempDB and then joined, right? So now you have this overhead uh, on your SQL Server instance, okay?